Do you ever have trouble kind of wrapping your mind around Photoshop layers and masks? Well, good, because in this video, I'm gonna help you understand the basics of Photoshop masks. In quite a few of my videos here on YouTube, I show Photoshop techniques that involve using different kinds of layers and masks. And if you're experienced with using masks, it's no problem following along. But I know for a lot of people, it just gets confusing. This video will actually be a chapter in a course that I'm working on right now called Photoshop Essentials for Outdoor Photographers. I'm making it just for landscape and nature photographers who want to learn to use Photoshop to develop images. Now advanced tools such as luminosity mass and advanced techniques such as exposure blending are often reasons that photographers want to get into Photoshop in the first place. But Photoshop is a big and complex program. And starting with those topics before learning the basics is kind of like going big wave surfing before you know how to swim. So I hope this lesson will help you at least get in the water. As far as I'm concerned, layers combined with layer masks are perhaps the most important feature of Photoshop. And it's what puts Photoshop ahead of almost any other image editing application. Why? Well, masks make it possible to show or hide portions of any layer. They allow us to target adjustments right where we want them. And they allow us to combine pixels from multiple layers into one. This makes advanced developing techniques such as exposure blending, focal length blending, focus stacking, perspective blending, and time blending possible. We're gonna work with solid color images so we can focus on what the mask is doing without the distraction of a detailed image. And if it helps, you can just pretend that this is a telephoto picture of a blue sky. When we look at a layer in the layers panel, this first thumbnail here shows us what that layer is. In this case, it's showing us that it's a blue colored pixel layer. Now, anytime we make a new adjustment layer, that adjustment layer, I'm gonna make a hue and saturation adjustment layer in this case, that adjustment layer comes with a layer mask. And this is the layer mask here. So on this layer, this is the icon that shows what the adjustment is. And this is the thumbnail that shows the mask. This pixel layer shows us the pixels in the thumbnail and it shows us that there is no layer mask on this layer. You can add layer masks and also manage layers by going to layer, layer masks, and getting to all of the layer mask controls right there. However, I find it most efficient just to manage masks right in the layers panel itself. You can delete a layer mask by right clicking on it and then selecting delete layer mask. You can add a layer mask to any layer using the layer mask button down at the bottom of the layers panel. It's the rectangle with the dark circle inside of it. And if your properties panel is open, you can see both the mask properties when the mask is selected, which you can see by the, uh, the bounding box around it here. Or if I click on the adjustment layer icon, then we jump over to the adjustment properties and back to the mask properties. And if your properties panel isn't open, you just double click on either the adjustment or the mask to open the properties window. When it comes to a pixel layer, I can add a mask to it. So if I select that layer and then click the mask button, I can add a layer mask to that pixel layer. When it comes to pixel layers, whichever is selected, the layer or the mask is the one that's being worked on. For example, if I take a paintbrush tool and set the foreground color to white and select the layer mask, it's a white mask. So painting on a white mask with a white brush doesn't have any effect. But painting on the blue pixel layer with a white brush, whoops, make sure that my brush foreground color is white. Painting there actually paints white pixels onto the blue layer. And anytime you wanna back up a step of something that you've done in your history, we can see that down here in the history panel. So I can just click to back up there, or I can type Control or Command Z to back up in the history. Now the rule of mask to remember is that white on a mask makes the layer visible and black on a mask makes the layer invisible. And a rhyme that can help you remember that is white reveals the layer and black conceals the layer. White reveals, black conceals. 
So for example, on this adjustment layer, currently I haven't made any adjustment, so I haven't moved any of the sliders at this point. But if I did make an adjustment, for example, to the lightness, so let's darken this, and maybe to the hue, I can actually change the hue of that color with the hue slider, maybe something like that. Because we have a white mask on that adjustment layer, the white is revealing that layer, so we're revealing the adjustment everywhere on the image. But because of the rhyme, we know that black conceals or black makes that layer invisible. So let's do that. Let's make that layer invisible. So one way I can do that is by clicking on the mask to open up the mask properties and then clicking the invert button right here. Or if I wanted to use a keyboard shortcut, I could use control or command I. Control or command I inverts a mask. So now with a black mask, that layer is invisible. The black is concealing the adjustment and I can turn that layer on and off and it's having no effect because it is invisible because of the black mask. Now, if I invert it back to white, now the adjustment is visible. Well, what if I want the adjustment to be visible in most of the image, just invisible in certain parts of the image? Well, I can paint on a white mask with a black brush. So if I select the brush tool and set my foreground color to black with these two little arrow keys here, I can switch the foreground to the background or I can use the X key shortcut on the keyboard to switch from foreground to background. And if you don't have black and white as your foreground and background colors, you can click this little button there to reset that or you can type D on your keyboard to set it to the default, which is what that is. All right, so I've set my brush color to black, I've selected my mask, and now I'm gonna paint on the mask with my black brush. And you can see that everywhere I've painted, I've made the adjustment invisible. And if you hold down Alt or Option and click on a mask, you can view what the mask looks like. So there's that mask I painted. I have a white mask and I painted on it with black, and if I hold down Alt or Option and click again, I go back to the image view, and there's the effect that mask is having on the adjustment. So we've seen that white reveals what's on the layer, makes the layer visible, black conceals or makes the layer invisible, but what about something in between white and black, like a shade of gray? Well, if we come down here and I click on the foreground color to open up the picker, I can come up here and you know we've got black, I can pick a shade of gray somewhere in the middle. So there's my shade of gray. And if I paint on the mask with that shade of gray, what we'll see is that we only make part of the layer invisible. So we're seeing some of the adjustment, but we're also seeing through to the blue layer underneath without the adjustment. And that's why we're getting a different color of blue. And if I look at that mask, we can see that where I painted gray, we're getting a mix of some adjustment and some no adjustment. And if I make a lighter color of gray, then we've made even less of that adjustment layer invisible. Or the other way to say that is, most of it in this area is visible. So let's say I didn't like everything that I did there. So far I've been painting with colors darker than white to conceal the adjustment. But if I wanna get that adjustment back, I'm gonna to go to a white brush and anywhere I paint white on the mask over what I've done, I can get back to my adjustment. I can bring my adjustment back. And now if we look at that mask, that's what it looks like. So white is revealing the adjustment again. And that's one of the powerful things about layer masks is if you paint with black and conceal something that you don't like how you did it or you don't want it to be everywhere that you did it, you can switch to the opposite color and go back the other direction. And you can do that as many times as you want. A couple other things you can do is if you want to see what the image looks like without the mask, you can use this little eyeball icon here in the properties panel to disable the mask. So that's like we didn't use the mask at all. 
and click it again and that turns our mask back on. You can also hold down the shift key and just click on the mask to do the same thing. So disable and re-enable the mask. We also saw that we could use the invert button in the properties panel or control or command I to invert a white mask to black and then invert the black mask back to white again. Well, if we invert a mask that has different shades of white, black, and gray on it, we get just the opposite. And so what we see now is that the area that used to be white is now black. So the area that used to be revealing the adjustment is now concealing the adjustment and vice versa. Everything is just reversed. And I can go back. Sometimes you may want to start with the adjustment across the entire image with a white mask and then with black or a dark color of gray, paint out the adjustment in certain areas or other times you may want to do just the opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this mask and then I'm going to add a new mask that's white, but now I'm going to invert the mask to black. So I've now made the adjustment invisible. I've concealed the adjustment and now with a white brush, I can paint to just reveal the adjustment in little areas where I want it. So you can come at it from both directions. Now let's say that I make another adjustment layer. Let's say a vibrance layer and I make an adjustment to the vibrance. But now I realize I want that vibrance adjustment to be applied to just the exact same places where I was making the hue saturation adjustment. So I can hold down the alt or the option key and click on this mask that I've already made and just drag it up and drop it on that new layer. And now I've duplicated that mask. So both layers are being affected by the same mask. And so the adjustments are happening in the same exact places. Just delete this layer real fast. And I'm also going to delete this mask and go back to a new white mask. So far, all my adjustments have been made with what's called a hard edge brush. But if I go up to the brush properties and change the hardness to a soft brush, then what we get is a feathered edge. And the mask of that shows us that while it's black in the middle, it slowly fades through shades of gray out to white. And that's what enables the adjustment to feather from no adjustment to all of the adjustment. So that's the difference between a hard edged mask and a feathered edge mask. So layer masks make it possible to target any kind of adjustment to any part of an image. With adjustment layers and layer masks, an endless number and arrangement of adjustment layers can be incrementally built up as you go. And all of the adjustments and masks can be modified and fine tuned or even deleted whenever you want. So that's a look at how masks work on adjustment layers. But masks on pixel layers provide a slightly different benefit. So I'm going to shift over to this other image. And here what we've got is two pixel layers, one on top of the other. I've got a red layer on top and I apologize if anybody has trouble seeing the color red. And if I turn off the visibility of the red layer, we see the blue layer underneath. And when I turn the red layer back on, now we see the red layer. It's blocking the blue layer. So now let me add a layer mask to the red layer. Masks on pixel layers, instead of revealing or concealing an adjustment, they're revealing or concealing the pixels of that layer. So right now the white mask on the red layer is revealing all of the red pixels. And those red pixels are on top of the blue pixels. So you can't see the blue pixels underneath. But if I choose a black paintbrush and paint on the white mask with a black paintbrush, now I'm concealing the red pixels and we're seeing through to the blue pixels underneath. So the white part of the mask is revealing the red pixels and the black part of the mask is concealing the red pixels and making that part of the layer invisible. So everywhere it's black, the red layer is invisible and we're seeing through to the blue layer underneath. And if I switch over to a white brush, I can paint over all the black paint on the mask with white paint and get my red image back. And if I paint with a shade of gray, I will reveal only some of the blue pixels. 
So in those areas, I won't see red or blue. I'll see a mix of red and blue, kind of a magenta or purple. That's the basic concept behind exposure blending. For example, here we have a light overexposed sky layer on the top and a darker underexposed layer underneath. And with the white mask, if I paint with black at 50% opacity with the brush, on the mask, I can blend or reveal some of the underlying pixels and blend the two exposures together. So that's been a very basic introduction to layer masks. The main thing to remember is that white on a mask makes the layer visible and black on a mask makes the layer invisible. And that gray makes the layer more or less visible depending on how dark the shade of gray is. So I hope this helped clear some things up about the basics of layers and masks in Photoshop for you. And if you'd like to learn more, my YouTube channel is full of tutorials like this. And I've also linked below to my Photoshop courses on my website. So that's all for now. Thanks as always for tuning in and I will see you again soon.